All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Let's uh, read chapter 17 this Friday, and we're going to roll on through our book, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Thanks again to Scholastic for allowing us to uh, read this online and on YouTube for all the kids. Chapter 17, Mother Gets Her Own Way. Over the course of the next few weeks, Mother seemed increasingly unhappy with life at Outwith, and Bruno understood perfectly well why that might be. After all, when they'd first arrived, he had hated it, due to the fact that it was nothing like home and lacked such things as three best friends for life. But that had changed for him over time, mostly due to Schmel, who had become more important to him than Carl or Daniel or Martin had ever been. But Mother didn't have Schmel of her own. There was no one here for her to talk to, and the only person who she had been remotely friendly with, the young Lieutenant Cotler, had been transferred somewhere else. Although he tried not to be one of those boys who spends his time listening at keyholes and down chimneys, Bruno was passing by father's office one afternoon while mother and father were inside having one of their conversations. He didn't mean to eavesdrop, but they were talking quite loudly and he couldn't help but overhear. It's horrible, Mother was saying, just horrible. I can't stand it anymore. We don't have any choice, said Father. This is our assignment and, no, this is your assignment, said Mother. Your assignment, not ours. You say if you want to. And what will people think, asked Father, if I permit you and the children to return to Berlin without me? They will ask questions about my commitment to the work here. Work, shouted Mother. You call this work? Bruno didn't hear much more because the voices were getting closer to the door and there was always a Always a chance the mother would come storming out in search of a medicinal sherry. So he ran back upstairs instead. Still, he had heard enough to know that there was a chance they might be returning to Berlin. And to his surprise, he didn't know how to feel about that. There was one part of him that remembered that he had loved his own life back there. But so many things would have changed by now. Carl and the other two best friends whose names he couldn't remember would probably have forgotten about him by now. Grandmother was dead and they almost never heard from grandfather father said had gone senile but on the other hand he gown he grown to you he grown used to a life and out with he didn't mind her list he become much friendlier with maria than he had ever been back in berlin gretel was still going through a phase and keeping out of his way and she didn't seem to qu be quite so much of a hopeless case anymore and his afternoon conversations with schmel filled him with happiness bruno didn't know how to feel and decide that whatever happened he would accept the decision without complaint. Nothing at all changed for a few weeks. Life went on as, fought, as normal. Father spent most of his time either in his office or on the other side of the fence. Mother kept very quiet during the day and was having an awful lot of more of her, men, of her afternoon naps, some of them not even in the afternoon, but before lunch. Bruno was worried for her health because he'd never known anyone to need quite so many medicinal sherries. Gretel stayed in her room, concentrating on the various maps she had passed, pasted on the walls, and consulting the newspapers for hours at a time before moving the pins around a little. Her list was particularly pleased with her for doing this. And Bruno did exactly what was asked of him, and caused no chaos at all, and enjoyed the fact that he had one secret friend whom no one knew about. Then one day, Father summoned Bruno and Gretel into his office and informed them the changes that were to come. Sit down, children, he said indicating the two large leather armchairs that they were usually told not to sit in when they had occasions to visit father's office because of their grumpy mitts. Father sat down behind his desk. We've decided to make a few changes, he continued, looking a little sad as he spoke. Tell me this, are you happy here? Yes, of course, said Gretel. Certainly, father, said Bruno. And you don't miss Berlin at all. The children paused for a moment and glanced at each other, wondering which of them was going to commit to an answer. Well, I miss it terribly, said Gretel eventually. I wouldn't mind having some friends again. Bruno smiled, thinking about his secret. Friends, said Father, nodding his head. Yes, I've often thought of that. It must have been lonely for you at times. Very lonely, said Gretel in a determined voice. And you, Bruno, Bruno asked Father, looking at him now. Do you miss your friends? Well, yes, he replied, considering his answer carefully. But I think I'd miss people no matter where I went. That was an indirect reference to Schmel. We didn't want to make it any more explicit than at that. But would you like to go back to Berlin? Asked Father, if the chance was there. All of us? Asked Bruno. Father gave a deep sigh and shook his head. Mother and Gretel and you. 
back to our old house in Berlin. Would you like that? Bruno thought about it. Well, I wouldn't like it if you weren't there, he said, because that was the truth. So you prefer to stay here with me? I prefer all four of us to stay together, he said, reluctantly including Gretel in that, whether that was in Berlin or out with. Oh, Bruno, said Gretel in an exasperated voice, and he didn't know whether that was because he might be spoiling the plans for their return or because, according to her, he continued to mispronounce the name of their home. Well, for the moment, I'm afraid that's going to be impossible, said Father. I'm afraid that the Fury will not relieve me of my command just yet. Mother, on the other hand, thinks this would be a good time for the three of you to return home and reopen the house. And when I think about it, he paused for a moment and looked out of the window to his left, the window that led off to a view of the camp on the other side of the fence. When I think about it, perhaps she is right. Perhaps this is not a place for children. There are hundreds of children here, said Bruno, without really thinking about his words before saying them. Only they're on the other side of the fence. A silence followed this remark but it wasn't like a normal silence when it just happens that no one is talking. It was like a silence that was very noisy. Father and Gretel stared at him and he blinked in surprise. What do you mean there are hundreds of children over there? Asked Father. What do you know of what goes on over there? Bruno opened his mouth to speak, but worried that he would get himself in trouble if he revealed too much. I can see them from my bedroom window, he said finally. They're very far away, of course. But it looks like there are hundreds, all wearing the striped pajamas. The striped pajamas, yes, said Father, nodding his head. And you've been watching, have you? Well, I've seen them, said Bruno. I'm not sure if that's the same thing. Father smiled. Very good, Bruno, he said. And you're right, it's not quite the same thing. He hesitated again and then nodded his head as if he had made a final decision. No, she's right, he said, speaking aloud, but not looking at either Gretel or Bruno. She's absolutely right. You've been here long enough as it is. It's time for you to go home. And so the decision was made. Word was sent ahead that the household should be cleaned, the windows washed, the banister vanished, the linen pressed, the beds made, and Father announced that Mother Gretel and Bruno would be returning to Berlin within the week. Bruno found that he was not looking forward to this as much as he would have expected, and he dreaded having to tell Schmel the news. And that is chapter 17 now. We're going through these real quick now. Um, we'll see you next week for chapter 18, 19, and 20. Have a great afternoon, guys.